talk to me. So I'm going to talk to you about building GitHub apps using Probot and then deploying those to a serverless function. So if you aren't familiar yet, Probot is a tool to build GitHub apps um, pretty easily through a command line tool as well, which I'll show you in a sec. If you don't know what GitHub apps are, uh, you can actually go up to developer.github.com slash apps and check them out there and find out details of how to automate your workflow using GitHub apps. And I'll show you what I mean by that too as well. So Probot has a CLI and it's called create Probot, Probot app. And with this, I'm gonna go ahead and run that and choose my app name. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just use all the defaults for stuff that comes up. This is actually inferring from my Git history and my, uh, my GitHub login. All right, so I'm gonna quickly walk through uh, some of the code that's already given to you. Mainly, everything else looks like a basic Node app. We do have a built-in test suite for you, uh, if that's something that's of interest. Uh, the main the main area we're gonna actually focus on is here, which is the index.js. So exactly how I explained earlier, uh, we do have access to app, which is gonna be your probot interactions. And then we already have uh, exactly what the code is um, from the documentation, which is once you've opened the issue, it's actually gonna create a comment for you. Uh, so we're actually gonna go ahead and get this connected. Now to test things locally, we're actually gonna use SME uh, for the, just for development purposes. SME is a tool built by the ProBot team that creates webhooks for you. Um, it gives you a webhook delivery service so that way you can funnel your local hosts, very similar to like you, you'd use it with NGROC. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually open up a tunnel for a local host here. And what that's gonna do is it's give me a webhook that I can actually use for my testing purposes. So it, now going back to your GitHub profile, we're actually gonna go into developer settings and GitHub apps, and we're gonna create a new GitHub app. I'm gonna enter my password, and I'm gonna create this as my SLS response bot. The homepage URL is actually not needed, but we're gonna need a webhook URL here. I'm gonna go ahead and just name my webhook the same as my um, my SME tunnel. And then I'm gonna create a super secret um, webhook secret just for the sake of um, preventing any sort of malicious activity. Here on Probot, we do have access to editing our permissions on a fine grained level. So every single webhook or interactions that you would like to interact with are listed here. So anything you wanted to use to do with the GitHub API, you can actually do by simply either providing read or read and write access to it. Uh, I'm gonna provide read and write access to my bot because I know I wanna actually create labels and I'll need to have write access to that. I'm also gonna create a, a follow all the, uh, subscribe to all events on issues. So whenever issues are edited, opened or closed, labeled, I'm gonna actually um, keep track of that. And I'm also only going to pre prevent any access to this only to my account. You can actually create ProBot apps um, with the intention of actually sharing them with a larger range of the community. Um, I'm actually just going to create this just for myself. Cool. So now I have a ProBot app. Uh, one thing to note is that pro all ProBot apps have an app ID, which if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can actually see that here. Uh, you do have the option too to create a upload a logo. And I'm just gonna go ahead and upload the ProBot logo as my bot, just for the sake of uh, brevity. Um, one more thing that you'll need to do, you wanna copy this, this ID, as well as click this green button and create a, so you wanna create a PIM file. And we'll use that in a second. So going back to ProBot, that same PIM file, just go ahead and drag that to your, your the root of your project. Um, this is important because it's gonna provide write access to your, your app and also uh, confirm with GitHub that this app is legitimate and is act, able to um, act on your behalf. So I am now gonna do Probot run. Uh, it's very similar to the NPM start. Uh, Probot is run is just a, a shortcut to do that as well. So the thing I need to do is actually fill out my .env. Now, um, because I did Probot run and I have already had SME running, Probot actually added uh, the SME 
web proxy URL to it. Uh, but it's actually a couple other things I need to actually add. So here we have an m.example. And in the example, there's already there's a reference to three other um, environment variables I need to add to as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add those there. Do need to copy my app ID, which I'll go ahead and put this here. And I'll go ahead and change my secret offline, but I'm just going to change my secret to secret because that's actually what I named it to. So these are all the um, variables you need and to, in order to get your ProBot app to work. If you go to your URL, which is um, it's given to you on your app settings page, I named my bot SLS response bot. And here I can go ahead and install that bot to any sort of repo I'm looking to install it. I have a choice to install it to all, all repositories or only selected ones. I only want to add it to selected ones. And I'm going to add it specifically to my project. Go ahead and hit install. Notice that I do have uh, permissions uh, only to read my metadata. So providing my, my user handle, the owner of my repo, as well as only read and write access to issues. So I'm not actually providing access to organizations or anything else um, or any sort of like private information. I'm only having access to issues. So now I'm going to go back to my repo that I've installed this to. Go ahead and create an issue and see if this works. So now that we have our bot working, uh, as you can see, our bot has created a, a response to the issue that I was just created. I'm just going to take a look at SME. And the great thing about SME is that it's been connecting tunneling from our local host um, and delivering that as our webhook. This is ideal for testing purposes, but not I ideal for production purposes. So my choice for creating a production webhook is deploying this direct to the Lambda. The cool thing about this is that Lambda actually runs on demand. So especially with bots, like I don't need to have this running on a server um, continuously. I can actually run this on demand as a function. Um, if you are familiar with Lambda, definitely check out more details on their product page. Uh, and the way that ProBot has currently, um, we have a plugin built on the serverless framework. Um, so if you haven't heard of the serverless framework, just go to serverless.com and check that out. Um, but without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead and install the ProBot serverless Lambda extension and that on my extension is installed i'll go ahead and create a new file which i'm going to call the handler js and i'm going to save that and explain exactly what this is doing so here i'm in i'm requiring that same sort of that same extension uh, i'm taking my index.js which is here and we just saw that actually we just saw that here and I'm, I'm going to name that uh, as a variable, which is going to be app function. And then go ahead and export that um, underneath the, the, um, the namespace of ProBot. So I'm doing this purposely because serverless, they require these things called the serverless.yamls. And if you have one of those these in your, your project root, um, it will know exactly what to do as far as deploying your, your ProBot function. So I've already pre-populated some data that I need. Um, I'm not going to go through all this, but just note that this is AWS specific. Serverless framework actually can work with a number of providers, including Azure and Google Cloud Functions. Um, the th three things that are most important that you need to note is that I'm passing over uh, my webhook secret and my app ID. Um, so that way the environment variables are available. Uh, the webhook URL I'll update in a moment um, once I have a deployed endpoint. And then one other thing is the log format. So whenever I got error messages or and I just want to read the logs, uh, I'm providing JSON in my errors from JavaScript. So I'm just going to let Lambda know that's exactly what I want. One thing to note too as well is that you want to go ahead and install serverless um, globally so that we can use serverless CLI. Uh, I've already done that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do serverless deploy. And now that it's deployed, you just wanted to make note of this new URL. So, so far, like I mentioned, we were using SME for everything. Instead of using SME, we're now gonna instead replace everything with this new, this new endpoint. I'm gonna go back into my apps settings, place my URLs, my webhook URL with my new Lambda URL. So go ahead and save those changes. One thing I didn't point out earlier is that the name of my function is router. Uh, and the other thing is that I'm actually looking for my handler uh, JS file 
and then grabbing what I'm exporting, which is called Probot. Um, this is important if you wanted to create other functions uh, inside of the same file. Um, you can ex export them all separately if you'd like. So that's it. I've gone ahead and uh, added Lambda as my choice for webhook URLs. So if you're interested in learning about more about Probot, um, we, there are office hours every weekday, uh, 11 a.m. at um, West Coast time. So I think this actually changes for your your local time zone, uh, but definitely add that to your calendar and check out all the other opportunities to uh, work with Probot and use Probot as enhancing your GitHub workflow.